you watch the local news or you just scroll through Facebook and you see devastating things happening all over this world. For some reason, it's not always easy for us to empathize with those people going through those circumstances. Now, put us in a different situation to where it's someone in our home going through that, our wife, our children, our neighbor, our coworker, someone we see every day, someone we interact with every day, someone we have a relationship with, and suddenly there's meaning in that, right? Uh, if they're in a car wreck, it means something to us. If they're sick, it means something to us. If they're in a devastating accident or a plane crash, then that hits home, right? That hits it's us right in our heart. Hi, I'm Pete, and me and my wife, Shauna, on a daily basis, want you to come in our home to share in Bible study. We believe the best way to disciple your family is to read and study God's Word every day together. Today, we're on 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. The scripture says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you have not seen him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. So the great mystery to this world is how in the world can a Christian believe in something that they have not seen? Right? How can they believe in a God that they cannot sit down and talk to? How can they believe in a God that they do not have a conversation with face to face? How can they believe in something they have not seen? Well, here the scripture says that we're blessed because we do believe in something that we have not seen. You know, when our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, one of the apostles, uh, Thomas, doubted it when he hadn't seen it himself. He said, unless I see it myself, I will not believe. Well, he's seen Jesus, and Jesus said, here, Thomas, stick your hand in, uh, hands in my wounds, and you'll see that I'm real. And he says, blessed are you now, for you have seen, but more blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. Uh, belief, right? That that the, the the big term of faith is what comes into play, and it actually says that we're receiving the end result of our faith, which is salvation. So, as believers, uh, I opened with this idea of, you know, we're not necessarily sympathetic to those that we do not know. We might feel bad. Oh, I hate this has happened but we don't know that individual. Our heart doesn't hurt for them if it happens in a third world country or somewhere around the world or someone we've never met in our life. But let it happen to someone we know. Well, I tell you this, I know Jesus. He, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I have never seen him. I've never had a face-to-face -face conversation with him, but he is ever present in my life. And I'm thankful for that. And I believe that he is real as this apple sitting on the table in front of me. He's as real as Anna who's just walked in here. And I believe that he lives and dwells within my heart. I believe that he has prepared a home for me in heaven for eternity. I believe that he died to pay the price for my sins. I believe he rose from the grave after the third day. I believe he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now making intercession on my behalf. I believe that. I believe it 110% with everything that I got, and I know that he is real, right? I know that I know that I know. And as believers, we, we have this faith because we've had an experience with God. You know, I, I once heard a uh, uh, great evangelist, Ray Comfort, say, you know, uh, you could tell someone a stove is hot, but if you let them touch the stove and they burn their hand, they know the stove is hot then, right? You can't convince them it's not hot after they've burnt their cell because they know they've experienced it. They've got scars. They've felt the pain. They know. Well, I can tell you this. I've experienced Jesus Christ. There's nothing you can say or do to convince me that he is not true because I've experienced him in my life. I've seen him manifest himself in my life. I've seen the word of God come alive within my life. And I truly, truly believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he is the only way to escape the judgment that is to come. So let me encourage you, if you do not know Jesus Christ, examine your heart, right? Start to read the Word of God. Study, seek after the truth, and it will be revealed unto you. Remember, there's four things we believe a disciple of Jesus Christ will do every day. We believe that you will seek to encounter God. You will exalt God, you will edify yourself by reading the Word of God, and you will engage this world for Jesus Christ. Until next time, God bless.